Hello, my name is Sierra and welcome to my channel, Homemade Mathematics. Today we are going to be talking about negative exponents. We're going to be looking at where negative exponents are used, how to get rid of them, some basic examples, and then some combination examples where we're using product and quotient rule along with some negative exponents. So if any of those things sound interesting to you, keep watching. So the first thing I want to start with is where negative exponents come from. If you take a look back at my power and quotient rule video, this should look pretty familiar to you. If not, go back and take a look at that one. In that video, we saw with quotient rule, if they have the same base and we're dividing, we can subtract their exponents. If we were to do that, and again, this is the example that I show in that video, you'll see we have a base of 3, and if we subtract 3 minus 5, we get negative 2. Right? But if you try to think of 3 raised to the negative 2 power, so 3 times itself, a negative 2 times, negative exponents don't really make sense. So that's why we want to get rid of them. But if you saw that video, you'll see we can also look at this problem in a different way, which is if I were to write this out. So if I were to expand this, so my three to the third, if I were to make it three times three times three, three to the fifth, and I were to do my canceling, right? Three divided by three is one, three divided by three is one, three divided by three is one. I'd be left with nothing on top, so one, and I'd be left with two threes on bottom. So three squared, or as we know, three squared is actually one ninth, right? That makes a lot more sense. So you might notice all we have to do to get rid of that negative exponent is move it to the bottom of the fraction. Or if it's on the bottom of the fraction already and it's negative, right, our double negative would make it positive, move it to the top. So before we take a look at some examples of how to use this to simplify some expressions, I want to make a point of why negative exponents matter or where we see them. If you watch my intro to exponents video, you know I talked about how one of the main uses of exponents is scientific notation, which scientific notation is used to show either really, really big numbers or really, really small numbers. And negative exponents, that is our very, very small number. So let me show you an example of what I mean by that. At some point, I will go into further depth and actually make a video on scientific notation. But just to give you a little preview, this number here, to write that in scientific notation, we'd write that as 1.23 times 10 to the negative 8. You can see here where we use those negative numbers to express our really, really small number. Now let's take a look at how we can use this to help us simplify. Okay, so we now have this nice little rule that I wrote up here that we just discovered. If we have something to a negative exponent, we can just move that to the bottom of our fraction um, and that exponent will become positive. Those two things are equal, they mean the same thing. So let's use that for these next three more basic examples and then we'll get into some combination problems. So anytime I'm doing a simplifying problem with exponents, if there are negative exponents, I always take care of those first. You'll see when I get into some of the harder, more combination problems, how helpful that really can be. So our first problem here, we have three X to the negative five over six. So like I said, I'm gonna start with those negative exponents and get rid of them, which we know if we have it on top, negative exponents, we can just move it on bottom to make it become positive. All right, however, you might notice I can simplify this a little bit more. We do want to simplify our fractions if we can. So three over six would simplify to one half. So to get rid of our negative exponents, the simplest form we could put that in is one over two X to the fifth. With number two, again, I'm gonna start by moving my negative exponents to get rid of them right away. So this X to the negative one is on top. I'm gonna move it to the bottom to become just X to the first down there. And then my Y to the negative two, it's on bottom. 
So to get rid of the negative exponent, I'm going to move it to the top. So my y squared goes up there. All right, now that I've moved them, you'll notice we have 8 over 2, which can also be simplified. We can divide both 8 and 2 by 2 to get 4 over 1. And you'll see we have 4 over 1. You can choose to put the 1 there or not. And then we have y squared got moved to the top. Our x to the first got moved to the bottom, which anything to the first is just itself. So again, you can have that one in front and that one exponent, but you don't need them. It means the same thing. So that would be our simplified version of number two. Number three, I made a little more challenging to where we have something we can combine right away. We can use our quotient rule because they have the same base of five. And if you notice, if we subtract those, 3 minus 2, I'd be left with 1 5, since there's more 5s on bottom. I'd have my 5 to the first on bottom, or just 5, right? Anything to the first is just itself. My x squared is fine. It's positive. It doesn't have anything to combine with, so I'm going to leave my x squared on top. And then lastly, I have that y to the negative 3, which we do not want a negative exponent in our answer. So if it's on top, we move it to bottom to get rid of it. If it's on the bottom, we're going to move it to the top so that it becomes y to the positive 3. All right, so our simplified version of that would be x squared y cubed over 5 or 1 fifth x squared y cubed. There's a lot of different ways you can write all of these. Now let's take a look at some where you have to use the product or quotient rule first and then use our knowledge that we now have of negative exponents. As you can see, these problems are a little more challenging, but we're going to take them step by step and make them easy. This first one, we have x squared times x to the fifth over y to the negative four. So first thing I see is my negative exponent. You don't have to start with that, but that's where I like to start. I want to get rid of negative exponents first, which if it's on the bottom of my fraction, I'm going to bring it to the top. So my y to the fourth is going to come up top. When I move that, it becomes positive. All right, and then you notice on top together, I have two x's, so they are being multiplied. I can use my product rule which tells me I'm going to keep my base of x and I'm going to add my exponents. All right, and then we brought our y to the fourth to the top. When I did that, there's nothing left on bottom, so I could put it over one or just leave it x to the seventh, y to the fourth. Notice I don't have any negatives in my answer. Number five, I'm gonna do the same thing. Get rid of those negative exponents. <laughs> Whoa, Bentley really wants to get rid of the negative exponents. <laughs> Bentley! So if you haven't watched my product and quotient rule, Bella interrupted that one. This is Bentley. He decided he hates negative exponents and he really wants to get rid of them. <laughs> Good boy, Benny. Thank you for helping. Having four dogs and trying to teach can be a challenge sometimes. Okay, so number five, again, we're going to get rid of those negative exponents first. So that a to the negative two up there, we want to get rid of it. If it's on top, we move it to bottom. All right, so that a squared is now on bottom. Now, I don't have negative exponents. I'm going to combine the things I can combine, right? They have to have the same base to combine. So if you can see, I have b to the fifth over b squared. I can combine those there, right? When we have quotient rule, we're going to subtract. 5 minus 2 is 3. I have more b's on top, so my b to the third is going to be on top, right? Then if we go to combine our a's, notice they are both on bottom together, which means they're being multiplied, which when we use our product rule, we add our exponents. So we have a and then 3 plus 2 to the fifth. We don't have any negative exponents. We've combined everything we can combine. That would be our final answer. Okay, last one here. We have some numbers we have to take care of first. Um, so we have negative 2 squared. All right, I want to make a little side note here. 
All right, so you can see here there's two different ways of writing negative 2 squared, and they actually both get you different answers, so you have to be careful. The version we have here, we have negative 2 in parentheses, so we are squaring that negative 2, right, times itself. Negative 2 times negative 2, which a negative times a negative would get us a positive 4. So for example here, it would be a positive 4. However, if those parentheses were not there, this is now saying 2 squared, 2 times 2, which is 4, with a negative sign on. So that one would actually be negative 4. So just a little side note, be careful. We can simplify this negative 2 squared to 4 over 12, which we should know 4 over 12. We can divide both of those by 4 to simplify to 1 third. Right? Those are just my coefficients out in front. It acts just as a fraction. 4 twelfths is 1 third. All right? Then you guys know I like to get rid of my negative exponents. So my a's here, since they're both negative, they're actually just going to flip-flop. Right? My a to the negative 3 is going to come on bottom. So it's going to be a to the third on bottom. My a to the negative 2 is going to come up top. So we're going to have a squared on top. All right, and then these are in the right place already, so we can go ahead and combine them. We're going to use our quotient rule, which tells us if we are dividing, we are going to subtract our exponents. If there's not an exponent there, we know there's an imaginary one. So 2 minus 1, we would have 1b left, and there was more on top, so our b is going to be up there. Are we done? No, we still have one more thing. You might notice we still have A in here twice. We can combine that, right? They have the same base. We're going to use our quotient rule since we're dividing, which quotient rule tells us to subtract our exponents. Two minus, or three minus two would get us one. Where is that exponent going to be though? Is it going to be on top or is it going to be on bottom? There's three A's on bottom, there's only two on top. So that A that's left over is going to be on bottom with our three. That A squared is now gone, and so we just have our one B, or just B, on top. So that whole fiasco simplified down to B over 3A. No negative exponents, nice and pretty. I hope this video was helpful for you. If it was, please give it a thumbs up. I hope you are enjoying this exponent series. If you have any questions for me, please comment those down below and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thank you.